One of the most central relationships to trading communities in the early 17th century turn out to have been sexual relationships between English men and indigenous women. This kind of pattern might be familiar to us if we think about diplomacy in this era because European kingdoms cemented relationships by marrying off their children to form alliances. That kind of pattern held in a different kind of form. Uh, English trading companies tended not, in fact they didn't, um, send English women overseas to marry uh, indigenous leaders, although there were some proposals that the English do so. Um, Iskender Muda, who was the Sultan of Acha, wrote a letter to James I asking James I to send an English woman uh, to him, him to marry, and a father actually presented his daughter to the East India Company as a suitable candidate. The company debated this matter and finally decided not to pursue it. So once the trading companies decided that would not be the method they pursued, what we find instead are a series of informal relationships, some long-term relationships, some, of course, deeply exploitative sexual relationships or sexual connections between English men and indigenous women. This was a pattern that you find all around the world. It became formulaic in some of the major trading posts in West Africa and in the fur trading communities of Hudson Bay. This was how the English created trading networks by um, creating liaison with indigenous families through women.